Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the first panel for the day. But before that, allow me to invite Mr. Vineet Roy, Chairman of IntelliCap, to set the context for the panel. And could we please welcome him with a huge round of applause. Let me welcome you all on behalf of IntelliCap to Sankalp Unconvention Summit 2013. Uh, and more specifically to the panel, Transformation, Innovation and Impact, Are We Changing Lives? Uh, the theme of this year's Sankalp was actually to look at us again and possibly reflect, pause, and see if we are ready to go forward and be the industry that we claim to be. And uh, this panel was basically which is a very illustrious panel comprising of people from both the global north and the global south, uh, people who have been practitioners, investors, and uh, supporters in building the infrastructure that uh, impact investing and social enterprise are looking for. Uh, the idea was that can we actually do some tough talking? Can we really question our basis of the claims that we stand for? And uh, to make that happen, uh, we have a very, very, a moderator who doesn't belong to us so that he can question us freely without bothering about where we come from and what kind of stature we hold in our eyes at least. Uh, my job is to introduce the session and leave the moderator with these questions which might guide the debate and discussion around the innovation of impact investing. The challenges that surround its meaning and definition, the claim by this new emerging industry that we impact people, and its true ability to make the difference. And finally, to hear if this model is ready for scale. As a participant in the evolution of this industry, I must congratulate all of us who have been part of this collective leadership that has been able to galvanize the global opinion in giving us, or at least making us in the situation where we are claiming that we are industry. Uh, the point is, are we really ready to live to that claim? Uh, we have an opportunity today to possibly contribute positively to this world. But before we actually stake claim to that opportunity, there is need for us to actually be more responsible and then question our claims properly. Some of the questions that I would actually like the moderator and the panel to think and reflect on includes, is the idea of impact investing itself an innovation? And if it is an innovation, is the innovation about the art of working with people in the base of the pyramid mixed with the science of the business itself, or is it something else? Are we, are we, or possibly, are we trying to market a concept so well, which has very little to differentiate itself from what we have been doing for generations? I think that's a question that we need to answer before we claim, because a lot of people are not able to see the difference between impact investing and investing per se. The second question that I actually believe needs to be debated much more deeply is the equation between the risk and reward. Is there a correlation in risk and reward in impact investing and social entrepreneurship? Is there a reason for us to actually seek lesser reward? Is there a reason for us to seek no reward at all? And if that's the reason, would this approach make this industry unsustainable itself? The third question is, if impact funds are doing something very different from what, what others are doing, is there a reason for us to actually seek different economics of the fund? And if that's true, then why should social entrepreneurship not seek, or social entrepreneurs not seek a premium for the work they are doing? And if both is true, are we again going for, towards the path of unsustainability? The third thing, for the fourth point, how do we solve this impact metric conundrum? How would we actually figure out, are we really making that impact? And is the cost sustainable again? Since we are talking about sustainability, would these costs actually be included in the cost of doing this business? And if so, do we need to actually innovate again to measure these impacts and find a cheaper way of doing it? Should India lead the way of showing the world how to do it cheaply? Do we have the capability to do that? These are some of the questions. And finally, I think the last question, which is actually the question which is the theme of, inter of, of the convention, unconvention summit itself, is can impact investing transform lives? Or is this too early a stage for us to really even stake a claim to the chance of playing any role in transforming people's life? Uh, I would like to request Suresh to actually take the panel on the stage and maybe debate on these questions. I, along with the audience, would be very curious to hear the views of the eminent panel 
because I believe it's time for us to really reflect and pause and basically question our own preparedness for going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Vineet. You have given us a well, as well as our panelists, a lot to think about and to debate. With that, let's move on to our opening plenary session. Ladies and gentlemen, we're running a bit late as per our schedule, and we shall make up for it during the lunch time. Innovation, impact, and transformation. Are we changing lives? This thought-provoking session will discuss the emerging innovations around impact investing and impact enterprises. The participants will address one key question. Can impact investing elevate poverty or is this a financial innovation that reduces vulnerability or enhances livelihood opportunity for low income economically active population? Our esteemed panelists today include Mr. Anthony Buglevine, will join the panel discussion through a video conferencing facility based in San Francisco. Mr. Buglevine is the Chief Executive Officer of Nonprofit Finance Fund. He writes and speaks regularly on the evolution of the social sector and the emergence of the global impact investing industry. Mr. Buglevine is the co-author of Impact Investing, Transforming How We Make Money While Making a Difference. Mr. Mark Stolenson is the Chief Executive Officer of Legatim and has served with the firm for over seven years in various capacities, including the head of group investments. Ms. Minakshinath is the deputy head of DFID India, UK Department for International Development and also heads its private sector development initiatives. She is an advisor on issues such as social excursion, trade policy, labor standards and microfinance. Mr. Jayan Sinha is the Partner and Managing Director of Omni DR Network, India Advisors. Mr. Sinha leads Omni DR Network's all-over investment strategy and operations in India. He brings more than 20 years of experience in investing and strategy consulting, as well as a deep understanding of managing investments and advising businesses in India. Mr. Paul Basil is the founder and the CEO of Wilgro Innovations Foundation, where he discovers, incubates, and impacts innovations and innovators. Previously, Mr. Basil co-founded the Lemonson Recognition and Mentoring Program for Innovators and Wilgro Innovation Marketing Private Limited. Unfortunately, Ms. Nisa Godrich couldn't join us due to a personal emergency and sends in her heartfelt regrets. For moderating the plenary, we have amongst us Mr. Suresh Venkat. Mr. Suresh is an anchor, columnist, and writer. He has also spent over eight years at CNBC TV 18 as a senior anchor and executive producer. Mr. Suresh's editorial expertise lies in the domains of technology, innovation, social business, and green business, and is widely renowned both for his unique insights into business and his irreverent style as an anchor. May I request our moderator as well as our panelists to proceed to the stage and may I request our moderator to carry forward the proceedings for this session. We evidently have one extra chair. That was a weighty introduction and we'll try to live up to the introduction. Uh, before that, I just want to make sure we're connected to Anthony. Anthony, can you hear me? My name is Suresh. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Right, gentlemen, Meenakshi, you have an honorous responsibility before you. This is the start of the Sankalp and Convention. Over a thousand people apparently, apparently sit in front, in front of, you. of you. And what, and what, you're, what you're about, about to, to say in the next half hour is going, is going to set, set the tone for the next two days. Two days. Luckily, Luckily, I only, I only have, have the job of asking, asking provocative, provocative questions, questions and letting, letting you cat some of the pigeons. pigeons. You, have you have the task of answering, answering those questions. questions. Right. Thank you, Vineet, for those opening remarks. I'm going to take off from where you left off. I've for long, long been a been critic, critic of social business, business and impact investing, investing, and it's to Vineet and Intellicap and some credit, credit, credit to keep inviting me back, back year after year to criticize them for what they're doing. doing. So let so me start with my critics hat once again. My first, first question, question, and I'm and going, going to put, put that, that question, question to uh, Jayan Sinha. 
Jain, what, what is impact, impact investing? Why is it Why different, is it different from, from any other kind of investing? investing? Well, well it's, 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 it's a great, great honor to be here with, with this very distinguished, distinguished panel. panel. And, and I think, I think you've, you've uh, given, given me the onerous task, task, if you will, of answering, answering your first and very provocative question. So I'll try and do my best uh, uh, and try and answer this. Yes, can you perhaps raise the volume on the mic? Sorry, I just fixed that in a second. Folks in the back, can you hear me now? No, nope. nope. not yet. Yet. Okay. So, so we, I think we've got give us a second to fix that technical issue. Well, at least the musical performance, I think, was quite loud. So <laughs> I'm sure they have. They have enough yeah, water. Yeah, temporary yeah, deafness. That's right. I, I hope that's, that's not the case. case. All right. Is this a little, a little better? better? Can you hear me? Okay. Super. Well, I'll, I'll try not to shout. But anyway, I was I was just saying to Suresh that you know we we are starting this off. There's many of you here in the audience and of course uh, I have I guess uh, the misfortune I would say to start with uh, a very loaded provocative question but, but uh, jokes apart uh, impact investing is different and it's different in at least uh, three ways from regular investing first of all what we are trying to do with impact investing is what, what Sir Ronald Cohen uh, discusses and talks about as uh, the new venture capital and just like venture capital created if you will uh, the, the whole sort of uh, wave of entrepreneurial innovation uh, and, uh, and entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship around, around the world, the world. I, think I think it's possible, possible with impact investing, investing to get, get markets, markets markets to work, to work for, for the poor. poor. And, that's and that's really, really the objective for the for poor the and for, for in other places, other places where markets, markets are not working, not working properly, properly, whether it's environmental impact, impact or, or other, other aspects, aspects uh, where, markets where markets really cannot, really cannot deliver uh, very efficiently what they should be able to deliver, in many cases are able to deliver. So impact investing is really addressing those, those situations, situations where markets, markets are not, not working, working very well. well. And it and is it a is very, very different style, style of investing. investing. And as I said, I'll come back to it in, 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 where, where, I, where, I, where I think the distinctions are really in three ways. ways. First, because, First, because you're, you're working where markets don't work very well, well. It, takes it takes a while to really unlock, unlock those markets, markets and you've got to do a lot in terms of market creation, which you don't have to do in normal investing, number one. Number two, the beneficiaries in most cases are very vulnerable populations. And therefore, it's all the more important that you don't take, in effect, the very powerful forces of the market and, and unleash, unleash them, them upon, upon a very vulnerable, vulnerable population, population uh, and, make, and, make, and expose them to unnecessary risk, risk which in many cases, cases uh, you know, will result, result in not just deprivation, but also uh, real uh, sort of uh, perverse consequences in terms of even deaths and so on, which we've also seen. So that's the second reason why impact investing is different, is because the consumers in this case are very different. They're very vulnerable populations. And then the third reason why impact investing is different is because you have to, as an investor, do a lot of things which are very unnatural, unnatural for investors, investors to do, which is which you, have you have to provide, provide a tremendous, tremendous amount of support, support to the companies that are trying to unlock these markets, markets for the poor. You have to have, have very long holding periods. Uh, you uh, have you to have do a lot of things that in many cases, cases the state does. does. Uh, and, uh, and so the, so the role, role of the impact, impact investor also, also and the type, type of investing, investing that you're doing is, is different. different. So, so, you know, just, you know, just to just conclude, I would say, say yes, impact, impact investing is different. different. It's unlocking, unlocking markets, markets for the poor, you're dealing, you're dealing with very vulnerable, vulnerable populations, populations, and you, and as, you as an investor, investor are, doing are doing things that in many cases you would expect the state to do as a normal investor. And therefore, for all those reasons, impact investing is very different. It has tremendous potential, as Vinny just pointed out. And, you know, as others say, we think it's going to be the next venture capital. So it's extraordinarily important for the world. But it but is, is not, not just, just plain vanilla investment. Anthony Bhagavan, I'm, I'm going, going to, come to come to you next, next all the way from San Francisco. Francisco. I'm, I'm going, going to take off on one uh, point, point that, that Jayant Sinha made. made. He, concluded he concluded his remarks with the role of the state, of the state. and sometimes, sometimes impact investing, investing is, is making up for so-called so failures of the state. state. Is that is a that dangerous precedent for private enterprise to attempt to fulfill failures of the state? Sure, I think that that's a great question. And, and first of all, just to say it's an honor to be uh, participating in, in Sankalp. I'm sorry I couldn't join you in person, but it's a great effort of the IntelliCap and the Sankalp team to make this work, hopefully, from uh, here in San Francisco. I think your question of the state is a very important one, and one that I, is too seldomly discussed at impact investing conferences and, and meetings. And I think that many impact investors are attracted to using investment as a way to address the social issues they care about, partly out of a frustration that the state is not a mechanism they can work effectively with. And so there is a tendency within the impact investing community to underappreciate the important role of the state. And so it's, it's, I think I appreciate that that's, that's where you're starting. And to answer your question, is it a bad precedent to provide services the state should do? There's a moral 
a political and a practical dimension to that question. I have been asked before uh, in forums, I've been accused by people of using investments to allow the state to get away with not doing its job. And that's a very interesting political and philosophical question. By providing essential services through markets, are we enabling an ineffective state to maintain power, whereas were we not to provide these services, perhaps we would motivate a revolutionary spirit in the population that would ultimately demand the state does its job. And I think that's a political argument that is a very interesting. I take a more practical approach, which is to say that if we have a solution that at least in the short term can ameliorate the suffering of poor people and provide some level of services, even if the state ultimately should be providing those services, then we have an obligation to do so. And again, there's a political argument that says by allowing the state to perpetuate itself without delivering services, we are dampening a revolutionary spirit. Um, I'm a much more simple-minded person, and I say if we have a business model that we can invest in that were to succeed could provide essential services like education or water or health care, in many cases, impact investors can finance companies or nonprofits to deliver services, but ultimately the state needs to pay for them. And this distinction between what can finance an organization and ultimately who pays for that service is an important one I'd like to get into in the, with the panel later on. Thank you, Thank Anthony. Anthony. That was a long and comprehensive answer, answer, but you made many, many valid, valid points. points. I'm, going I'm going to take, to take off from a couple, couple of the points, of the points that you that made. made. Uh, especially, especially about, about the failure, failure of the state, of the state in allowing, allowing, or allowing, or allowing your words, words, the state, the state to, get to get away with under-providing under or under-performing. Under I'm, I'm going to throw, to throw that question to Mark Stolison of Legatum. Legatum. Mark, when, when I first uh, saw the title of uh, C.K. Pillar's book, The Fortune of the Bottom of the Pyramid, uh, it shocked me that nobody was upset at the title. You're using the bottom of the pyramid, which implies the poorest of the poor. And the book says here's how you can make money of the poorest of the poor. Is that, is that in effect, effect a conundrum, a conundrum of, of impact investing, investing and, of and of social business, business in general, general that here are the, the poorest of the poor, poor we should we be treating them as citizens and human, human beings, beings. Instead, instead, we are viewing, viewing them as consumers? consumers. <laughs> I think you should ask the poor how they, how they view themselves. themselves. Okay. Okay. Um, having, having traveled, traveled all, across all across India, India and interacted, interacted with a lot of people, people through our finance, finance microfinance business, what we find is that people that would be characterized by others as the poorest of the poor don't necessarily see themselves that way. They see themselves as consumers and as mothers and as business people. They're sophisticated consumers. They understand the difference between 39% interest and 18% interest. They understand the concepts of disposable income for their families or their business. I think in some ways, perhaps what we should be doing is reframing the question. And the big meta question in front of us is, what is impact investing? Is it good? Is it different? From, from just, just plain, plain investing. investing. Um, and, and I think I from Legato's perspective, perspective as, as a global, global investor, investor, we find, we find it hard to see, see major, major material differences. differences. In some, some ways, ways as, as social venture capitalists or impact, impact investors, investors, we're trying, we're trying to, to carve out a, a niche or, or, a, or a new or asset, asset class. class. But, but over, over the years, years we've, we've seen this evolve. The distinctions become less and less. And it seems to be more and more the case that impact investing should just be investing. We use, we use language, language like, like sustainability, sustainability and scalability, and scalability but, but I guess, I guess one, one of our questions is, is should we be in some ways evolving, evolving going, going back, back to, the to the future and using words, words like, like profitability, profitability and growth? growth. One, one vocabulary is charitable, charitable vocabulary, vocabulary, another vocabulary is business vocabulary. And if you, and take, you take the case of microfinance, just, just, just in, in India, India, by our, our estimates, estimates, it will it take about $20 billion, U.S. dollars, just, just to provide, to provide the, equity the equity capital, capital necessary, necessary to reach, to reach the 400, 400 million unbanked in India. India. That's, That's equity capital. capital. On top, On top of, that, of that, you need to put debt capital. capital. Where, Where is that $20 billion, billion dollars going, going to come from? from? Will it come from, from the charitable, charitable sector? sector? Will it come, Will it come from, from the government, government sector? sector? India's, India's government, like, like America's, America's government, and government and others, are cash straps. They don't have the resources. So I think the distinction between what is the government's job and what is the private sector's job is a false one. It's everyone's job. And we should and we be should welcoming, welcoming capital, capital where it comes, comes from, from and providing it a home that's beneficial to everyone. everyone. Whether, Whether you, you want, want to call, call it the bottom, bottom of the pyramid, pyramid which, which is, is a term that we don't, don't identify with, with. We, just we just look at people as people, people consumers as consumers, consumers, and business, business people, people as entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. And, they're and they're the same, same worldwide. worldwide. 
But let's, but let's have, a have a quick, quick show of hands. hands. I'm, I'm going, going to ask, ask you the question, the question that, that, uh, that, that Mark, Mark brought, brought up. up. Here's, Here's my question. question. How, How many of you believe, believe that, that all investing is impact investing? Be it in guns, guns casinos, casinos, cigarettes, or solar, solar energy. energy. That, that any investment in a country that creates some impact, creates one job or 100 jobs, is impact investing. How many believe this answer to be true? Okay, a startling minority here. So Meenakshi, my next question for you is based on this. Classical triple bottom line accounting says people, planet, and profit. profit. Why, Why is profit, profit always, always the last? last. Mark just brought it up. Without, without profit, profit, people and planet cannot, cannot be sustained. When we, when talk, we talk about sustainability, sustainability I, never I never hear the conversation, conversation but, but how, how to sustain profitability. profitability. And what, what level, level of profitability is profitability? And what, what level is profit theory? Uh, well, well, I don't know why it's last. I think it's absolutely crucial. Uh, uh, the, the reason, reason might, might be because we are familiar with what was that seek profit, profit, but we are not, not that, that familiar with what was that, that look at planet, planet as, as well as development. As development. And, and uh, it's uh, important to put those up front. Uh, I think I that, that uh, I, I agree that, that you know, we should not have, have that dichotomy between, between state and, and uh, you know, know believing that the state should focus on all good things and can can closely chase profit. I think we all have a responsibility to look at all the three aspects that we just mentioned. Uh, when I you say we all, you mean not just social, social business, business. Any, any business. business. Any, 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 anybody, anybody. I mean, I mean all, all the whole in terms of, of helping people, people that, that can. That's, that's why you have hidden places. And you have them, them in, in villages when the, the taxi fellow gives, gives a little bit of money to the beggar or the street light. So I think they all have a role. And I think what's attractive about impact investing, and I think things a special class, is that it overtly says I will look for development and long long profit. And, and often, often we make trade-offs trade between, between the two when we look at projects project that come to us. us. We take, take higher risks risk because we so want, want few good, good models, models to emerge from, from what we support. support. And, we and we believe that those few good models, models can make a transformative difference to a lot of people in a sustainable manner because they have, they have revenue models, models that, that help them sustain, sustain and they don't need continuous injection of grant. So, so I come, I come from, from an agency that's, that's done a lot of grant financing and that has led us to work mainly with government NGOs, but, but we feel we have left, left out, out the, the private, private sector. sector. And, and there's, there's so much, much creativity, energy, energy drive, and drive in the private, private sector, sector that that's ridiculous not to leverage that, that to create jobs, jobs and, and social, social services. services. And, and I would I say for me, the framework was the Millennium Development Goals, mm -hmm. and I see a lot of possibility that, that impact investing can help us achieve those with far greater value for money. Paul Basil, you call, you call yourself, yourself not an impact, impact investor, investor, but an impact, impact innovator. innovator. What's, the What's the difference between, between the two? two? Is an is impact, impact investment, investment itself the innovation? innovation? You know, when oh, I was, I was looking, looking at my... my can you guys, can you guys hear, me? hear me? No, no can, can we raise, raise the volume, volume, Paul's volume, volume please? please? So, when I was looking at my photograph here, I saw a lot of hair gone. And part of it was because of this. Well, join the gang, Paul, join the gang. Answering this definition of impact investing. But you but know, you I know, think uh, the more, more I got, I got into impact, impact incubation, I started using more hair. More hair. Okay, okay. Uh, and I think and it was because it was more earlier stage. stage. And, in and in my view, view I think uh, a very, very strong, strong impact, impact investing. investing. Uh, the, foundation the foundation of it, it is set, set in, in uh, strong, strong impact, impact incubation. incubation. And I want, and I want to, to stress, stress on that, that because, because I believe, believe that the impact act incubation, incubation is not doing small boat camps, camps. Okay. not okay. doing two day business plan pitches. It's, it's about, about an engaging, an engaging process. process. And there's a there's lot of resources that, that needs to go in, in. heavy mentoring, little, little bit of money, money that needs to go in to make, make that work. So, so, so in my mind, uh, I, I'd, I'd redefine what you actually said. I'd really like to focus on impact act incubation as a foundation for impact act investing to build on. And really then build scalable business models. Why is, Why is impact activation any different from, let's say, the incubator cell at Ayurveda on the bar? They have an ever new incubator cell. So, 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 so I would pick, pick that incubator to talk about. Or any incubator. incubator. Let's, let's say so Silicon Valley incubator. Over incubators, incubators are known for space incubation, space incubation right? right? Okay. Uh, that's that's what, what incubators, incubators are known for. for. Uh, but, but I think the whole model here, here as Jen talked about, is about building scalable business models. There are mentors who understand these business models. There are angel investors willing to take risks with these business models. So there is an ecosystem that needs to be created, which is not not space driven, driven. But, but much, much beyond, beyond space. There's a whole, whole lot, lot of intangible pieces that, that, have, been, that, have, that have been created, created around, around these entrepreneurs. And, and these intangibles are different in the case of impact activation as opposed to, let's say, say incubating the Facebook. Facebook. For a lot of reasons, the entrepreneurs are different. The problems that you're trying to solve are different. So I think there's a little bit of a different ecosystem that you need to create. I'm not not saying that existing angel investors are not but I think there's an element of knowledge required, which is very, very 
Jain Sena for the longest time, time we believe, believe as governments and societies around, around the world, world also believed, believed. Perhaps, perhaps not only but through the 70s, 80s, 80s and 90s, 90s that, that any, any kind of investment in any kind of industry, industry agriculture, services, services uh, is, good is good for the country at large. Large political rhetoric continues, continues to say that we, are, we, are, we are welcome for investments, investments we welcome for domestic, domestic investments. investments. At the very least, all these investments create jobs, create wealth, create national prosperity, you know the standard arguments. What's wrong with that fundamental definition of impact investing? If you, if create, you create a million, million jobs, jobs, I create water for 20 people. people. A million, a million jobs in fact that creates should, should, should be the same, same as providing water for 20 or 200, 200 people. people. So therefore, therefore, should it, should it matter? matter? Really, really that I'm investing in solar energy or gun casinos? Should it make, should it make any, any difference to, to the nature of the impact that I have? You know, Suresh, so I love the way you set up uh, these controversies. I think that's really good for us to debate this and really butt heads against each other. You know what they say about television anchors. That's right, exactly. Screaming matches, controversies. And also TRPs. Don't forget you talk about the audience. So hopefully you all are engaged with this debate. I am for one because you are setting up some very interesting controversies here. I totally agree with you. Okay. okay. So, so let's, let's take, take that tension. Does Mr. Pierre 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 know about this? Of course, yes. he does. Okay. okay. In fact, he's probably he's watching, watching it live. Okay. okay. So, so uh, the, the, the fact, fact is that if you, if you look, look at a Bharti, for instance, yes. so you, you look, look at an infosys, 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 you could make, make the argument, the argument uh, that, that these, these are great impact investments, investments. And of course, they are. Right. Okay. And as long as you're having social impact, which is job creation, or you are providing income, not just to the person working in the PO or the IT center. But, but you know, you to know, the driver, driver that takes them there, there or, or to the gardener that's, that's working, working in the uh, Infosys uh, operations uh, uh, center. center. I think, I think that's, that's great. great. I think I you're think having an incredible, incredible social impact. But again, but again coming, coming back, back to the, the definition, definition that I laid out initially, there are, there are diff diff in, in all investing. Of course, in fact, investing is investing, which is why it's called investing. Okay. It's almost it's logic. logic. But, but in investing, investing there, are there are many different, different categories. There's infrastructure investment, for example. Right? Right? Uh, there's, uh, there's municipal, municipal investment. In the, in the same way, impact, impact investing is a category, category of investment. And, and it's a category, category of investment because, because you, can you, can you, can you can draw certain lines, lines and say, and say here's, here's why this is a particular type of asset category. It's a particular kind of investment class. And again, just going back to the definition I provided earlier, it works when markets are generally not working well. Right? Typically, when we go to the poor, we find markets are not working very well. Well, and that's, that's why you can say, that's, that's where you, you need, need to invest, invest in a particular way, in a particular, way, in a particular style, style uh, and, and that's, that's really what makes it impact investment. investment. So, so I think we can, can in fact, fact draw very clean boundaries and say, this, this type of investing is impact investing, investing because, because you're getting, getting markets to work okay. where they would they not work very well, and you're supplementing or complementing the role of the state. Right, so, right, so intent, intent is clearly, clearly an important, important aspect, aspect in impact, impact investing, not, not just the accidental or, or, or unintended, unintended byproducts of the investment. investment. I'm going I'm to go to Anthony Bagdivine once, once again. again. Anthony, Anthony my, my first, first question, question, I'm going to take off from the question, from the question that we need to pose to us. So my so question, question to you is this. Is, has impact investing become popular because we believe it can alleviate poverty or is it simply a financial innovation that can assist low-income but economically active and economically vibrant communities increase their level of economic prosperity? Simple question. Should impact investors make a broad claim or a boastful claim that they're in the business of poverty alleviation or should they simply say this? We're a group of investors. We'll take a group of people who are already reasonably well off and economically active. We'll make them much better off. What should what impact, impact investors, investors be saying about themselves? Well, I think impact investors need to be realistic about the complementary role we play alongside philanthropists and the state in together creating the societies we want to live in. Impact investors will be doing ourselves a disservice if we allow ourselves to be so enamored by our own rhetoric that we think we have created a silver bullet that can solve poverty. And certainly the experience in India and elsewhere with microfinance in some degrees is a cautionary tale about what happens when the social claims get out in front of the rhetoric. And so it is very important linking back to your first question to me about the role of the state that we come to recognize impact investment as a tool and a capability and an approach that will complement an effective state and a vibrant charitable sector that together can get a job done that none of us alone are able to achieve. So, so I think it's a, it is more than a financial innovation. It is a powerful tool to drive social good, but not a sufficient condition to create the societies we want to live in, but increasingly a necessary one to complement what the state and the charitable sector is able to achieve by themselves.
Meenakshi, you work, work a lot with, with, with poverty. poverty. It's, it's on, on your website. website. Give us a little, a little bit about, about your definition of poverty, of poverty and whose who's responsibility, responsibility it is to alleviate poverty. poverty. As a taxpaying tax citizen, if I paid my taxes, taxes, am I am done? done? As, As a corporate, corporate citizen, if you paid your taxes, 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 are you done? done? Is it, is it solely, solely the government's preserve to deal with the subject as sensitive as poverty? Well, we go by a multidimensional definition of poverty. So I think one issue I have the question to ask is economically active. So you're assuming that poverty is alleviated and the incomes are actually increased. That's, That's not, not the case. case. Uh, getting, getting good, good health, health is also about poverty. poverty. And, and uh, we, we saw, saw uh, pro uh, 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 interesting presentations yesterday about uh, uh, manual pump, pump that, that could resuscitate children where there was no power, power where the usual resuscitators don't, don't work. work. To me, that, that is a very good example. If you had the money, could you just buy one of those pumps? So therefore, isn't it all about the money? The pump, the pump is not is developed not because there is there nobody who is looking at this problem from that particular lens. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, therefore, this, this is for me a very good example of how we alleviate poverty. Even though the actual consumer of that service may not pay for it, it's the hospital, the hospital that buys it. Okay. Okay. So, so I think there is a big goal for uh, impact investing there. Um, in terms of, uh, so, so I believe the poor are not, not below poverty line, line and above poverty line, line are totally different. different. Actually, Actually research says there's a lot of movement around the poverty line. line. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to tell ourselves that we are going to a group which is just above the poverty line. line. Because, because if we are able to make their livelihoods more secure by giving them them some, uh, you know, you know good, good kind of livelihood because of the impact that has been supported, I think that's actually great because they won't fall into poverty. Uh, I, I think, think that, that people below poverty, poverty are also, also active consumers. consumers. They, they don't, don't just sit around. around. I mean, they do they jobs. jobs. They consume, they consume clothes, clothes and, and food and, and education and health. So I think there's a lot of scope for private sector to actually interface with them and give them uh, either cheap products, products that are the same quality or better quality products, quality products, quality products, products, products mm -hmm. at the same time. And no and point splitting hairs over who's, who's above, above the poverty level like economically. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. right. That's a fair point. point. Mark, I'm going to come to you with my next question. Impact investing, often called patient capital, and I'm going to assume that this is because venture capital is violently in patient capital. Right, right. I, I, I would I assume, assume the opposite the of patient capital has to be in patient capital. capital. Right, right. Is it, is it necessary, necessary, once again, taking off from Vinit's point, point, for impact, impact investing in patient, patient capital, capital to naturally seek mutual returns, returns less returns, returns than, than, than violent in patient capital? capital? <laughs> or can, or you, can be, you be your ambition be the same as a venture capitalist? I have never seen that distinction between venture capital and impact investing. I've never seen a difference. What is, what is patient, patient capital? capital? So, so most venture capital, capital around the world, including in India, is, is held in funds. funds. And, the and the funds usually have a 7 to 10 year term. term. That's, That's patient, patient capital by almost any commercial, commercial standard. standard. So in the, so public, the public equity, equity markets, markets, people measure their performance, performance on a weekly basis, basis or a monthly basis. basis. But in private, private equity, equity or venture capital, capital that's, that's inherently patient capital. capital. And, I think, and I think that's what, what we're talking, talking about here. here. I, I, the question, the question for, for, for us, us again, again, I think, as a group, group is, is everyone, everyone in this crowd is here because they want to make a difference. They want to see economic development and they see business as a tool to do that. But they, but they see, see failings, failings in markets, markets or in businesses, or in businesses. And, and I think we're, I think we're all, all together, together trying, trying to figure out, out is, is there a different, different way to do business, business that has the, the impact, impact has, 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 has the, the result of economic, economic development, development, but that, but that feels, feels better, better and feels, and feels more moral, more, more, feels more um, kind-hearted kind to people. people. Uh, and, uh, I and I think that's a great question. The Legato Institute, Institute, which is a wing of our organization, we're primarily, primarily an investment organization, organization. It runs, runs a, an index, index every year called the Prosperity Index. index. We, look we look at 170, 170 different factors, we cover 170 countries, countries and, and it's, it's comprised of eight, eight different sub indices. Today, Today India is ranked 101 out of 170 countries in terms of prosperity. And it's measured by both hard economic data, like GDP, but also perceptions of well being. What we've what found, we found over the past, past several years, years is that, that while India's, India's overall ranking, ranking has remained somewhat static, one of the sub-indices, sub which is the index that focuses on, on entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and opportunity, and opportunity has, been has been getting steadily better, better, better and better and better. And, better. and, better. and, better. and, our, and our question, question is, is why? why? And so and we so worked with Gallup, Gallup to do a, 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 a survey of entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs in India and ask them, why is this happening? happening? What's, What's changing, changing in your, in your, your business, business environment that's actually, actually making, making business easier? It's making, it's making entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship more accessible to people. And the, and answer, the answer that came, came back, which was fascinating, fascinating to us, was, was telecommunications. 
They basically are seeing the advent of telecommunications, broadband, and communications in general as being a massive force from the bottom up. It's lifting people out of poverty and it's enabling the spread of entrepreneurship and business across India. So, so then our, our question, question is, is, well, well how, how do you fuel, fuel telecommunications? Is that that state's, state's job? job? Is that is the entrepreneur's, entrepreneur's job? Is that, is that the venture capitalist's job? job? And again, and again I, think I think we come, come back, back to the same, same answer, answer, which is, which is clearly, clearly it's, a it's a coordinated, coordinated effort. effort. And, and you can't, you can't say, that say that one party, party is more virtuous than the other party. party. And I think one of the nature of the questions, and the question that we're all wrestling with is, is it okay to embrace business? Is it okay to actually say, Commercial, commercial capital, capital that seeks a commercial, commercial return, return, regardless, regardless of, of whether, whether the intent is to help people or not, is that good? Is that, good? Is that, is that virtuous? And our, our answer would be, it seems pretty, pretty clear. clear. Whether it's in India, India whether, whether it's in China, China where 400, 400 million, million people have been lifted out of poverty, out of poverty business, and business and entrepreneurship and enterprise, and it, it seems, seems like, like we need capital, we need businesses, but we also desperately need a regulatory and a business climate and environment that's conducive Oh, oh, excellent, excellent points. points. I'm, going I'm going to go to Paul, Paul Basil. Basil. Paul, Basil, Paul Basil, the, the question, question to you is simple. simple. Taking, Taking off from what Mark, Mark said, said, is virtuous, virtuous intent important in impact investing? Should I be a good guy with good, good ambition, ambition, good dreams for the future? I don't know. You know, my, my, my take on that, that is that's, that's where it possibly starts. starts. You see, you see a problem, problem you, you see an opportunity, an opportunity that, you that you can solve. Sorry, sorry I think you need to speak a little louder into the mic. Can we raise the Paul's mic once again? Sorry. In my view, I think it starts, starts off there. there. I mean, you, you, you really need to have the intent. You need to have the desire to solve that social problem. Okay. okay. And, I think and I think if you, if you don't, don't have that, that, and if you're, and on, you're on, on the other side of the spectrum, which is only wealth, wealth, I actually, I actually don't, don't think people are going to look, look at this. this because I agree, because there, there is a little, little bit of more patient nurturing of the idea required to actually build on the idea. And I'm increasingly seeing a trend. I haven't verified this statistically. But I'm, but seeing, I'm seeing an increasing, increasing trend, trend of successful, successful for-profit for -profit businesses, businesses having either, either volunteer, intern, intern with, with non-profits, non actually, actually working, working at the bottom of the pyramid, seeing, seeing those customers, customers generating, generating a whole lot of insights, insights before, before they even perfected, perfected their idea. So which means, means that the, that the company is actually set on a couple of years of work, work. Seeing, seeing customers, customers seeing, seeing working, working with them, them uh, not, not actually by building a business, business but, but in, in various, various other forms. forms. And in, in my, my mind, mind, that, that actually starts with that intent. 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 So, so I, I believe, believe that, that that intent is, intent is important. important. Very, very, very important. important. The, second the second part of the question, of the question is the same, same when I asked Mark. Mark. Uh, should, should impact, impact investors, investors seek somewhat neutral returns, returns as opposed to non-impact investors? Should the returns be slower, less or over a long period of time? I'm a wrong person to answer that. I want to build companies that they need to make returns out of. So I don't worry about the returns that they should generate. But if I have to look at it from an impact incubation perspective, uh, I'd actually, I'd actually want, want impact investors to make, make very decent returns, returns. Okay. Because, because, because at the, the end, end of the day, day if, if that doesn't, doesn't happen, happen, I don't, I don't think, think people will invest, invest okay. in, in much, much earlier stage negotiations. Jen, do you have a reaction, reaction to that, to that, to that, that as, as well? well. Well, Suresh, well, I, I think, think what you're setting, setting up very nicely in this debate is a series of false trade-offs. And that's what makes it fun. But I think all those trade-offs are easily sought. So one trade-off we talked about, market was a state. Another, Another trade-off trade we talked about was financial versus, versus social return. return. One, One trade-off trade we talked about was intentionality versus, versus no intentionality. intentionality. We talked we about, about profits, profits from, from the poor. Right? Right? So, so there are all these trade-offs of these tensions, tensions that you can set up and say, you know, as a result of that, this whole thing doesn't make any sense at all. And I think it's great to ask those questions, and we should. But I think the wonderful thing is that there are answers, good answers to all of them. Let me Let give you the answer to the intentionality question. question. If you have time, I'm obviously, obviously happy, happy to spend time with any of you at any point to go through some of these uh, false trade-offs because, because I think they're easily resolvable. Coming, Coming to the question, the question of intentionality, intentionality, the question one has to ask, ask about intentionality is not whether, whether there should be intention or not. The question is intention for whom? whom? Coming, Coming back, back to Mark's point, point which is business is business is business, and frankly, it's capitalism that's developed the world. What's wrong with that, right? So, of course, that's the way it's got but, but at the same, same time, time, if you're talking about impact, impact investing, investing and we're talking, talking about intentionality, is it intentionality in the hands of the, of the entrepreneur, entrepreneur or the investor? investor? Uh, we haven't I'd talked imagine about both. both. Not, Not necessary. necessary. I would, I would say, would say if, if an entrepreneur, entrepreneur comes, comes to us who says, you know what, I don't I give a dang for social impact. impact. I just, I just want, want to go build, build a, a great, great business. business. And by the, and by the way, way, we have people like that in our portfolio. portfolio. Okay. Okay. But, but the intentionality, the responsibility for that intentionality is ours as, as impact investors. Okay. Okay. Right? Right? So, so I'm not I'm necessarily a great believer in social, social entrepreneurship or social, social business. business. Because I think, so I think business, business, business is business. business. 
But as an investor, I do have the responsibility to my LPs to say whether we are delivering social impact. So it's, so it's my, my responsibility, responsibility, not the responsibility of the entrepreneur. No, the responsibility of the entrepreneur is to build the best possible, greatest business in the most responsible way possible. Right? right? So, so I have to judge whether that business is having social impact. impact. I, mean, I mean, if the entrepreneur is not doing it, that's, that's great. great. I have no problem with that. So I'm not, I'm not looking, looking for intentionality with the entrepreneur. But you are. But I should be judged. I should be judged for that. Just the way different should be judged. That is a good answer. That is a good answer. Anthony, Anthony, I'm going, I'm to, going come to come to you once, once again, again on this, on this same, same question. question. Uh, uh, the, last the last sentence that Jayan said is business is business is business. business. Do you believe, Do you believe that, that to be true, true or are some businesses different, different, different by their very, very nature, nature of the kind of business, business they engage in? in? I do think there is something fundamentally different about businesses that are intending to address social issues at the same time that they mobilize resources through profit for themselves and for their investors. I agree with Jayant that there are false trade-offs and we need not claim a righteousness or a monopoly on righteousness because of our intent. Um, we need all different kinds of businesses to succeed. But it comes down on a very personal level to the question of what kind of work do you want to do and with whom. And there is a fundamentally different community forming around those entrepreneurs who are seeking to create impact and profit and those investors who similarly want to back those kinds of companies. And on a, on a very simple level, I feel that impact investments are sometimes simply those deals that would not be done were it not for the intent. And that does not mean, and I think very importantly, I do not define impact investing around the financial return. And you posed that question earlier, do we need to trade off on financial return? One of the nice things about having this conversation now versus a few years ago, when I was at the first San Kalp in Mumbai, we had similar points of view and we had hypotheses and theories. Well, every week since then, we've gotten one week smarter because we've had one week's more of experience of doing deals and seeing what happens to the companies we invest in. And so we are in every week able on the margins to replace a little bit of our theory with a little bit more of facts. And just one point of fact I wanted to refer to is research that the Global Impact Investing Network conducted with JP Morgan in which they canvassed impact investors around the world on this question of their financial return expectations. And some very interesting results came from that analysis where the answers clustered in two areas. On one hand, there are clearly impact investors who do not believe they have to trade off financial returns to generate substantial social value. And Giants and others have been very articulate as to why it is the market is presenting biases that we can solve um, and misprice risk that we can address and therefore make very good returns while addressing social problems. So on one hand, there are a group of investors who do not believe that trade-off is necessary. But what is also clear in the data is there is a group of impact investors who are willing to make that trade-off if lower returns enables them to expand their investable universe into a set of deals that create even greater focused social value. So I think the answer in the data we've seen, which is becoming deeper and deeper every week when more and more deals are done, really is, is both and, and rejects the idea that we have to choose one or the other point of view that we have to take low returns or we have to take market returns. It turns out that within the impact investing community, we have people who are very comfortable doing both. But let, but me, let do me do another, another uh, poll, poll to the, to the audience, audience on this, on this very question. question. The, question the question is simple. Is simple. Should, Should impact, impact investors, investors seek mutant, mutant lesser, lesser or delayed returns? returns? Whoever, Whoever says, says yes, put your hand, hand up. up. They, should they should seek, seek delayed, delayed, lesser, lesser or mutant, or mutant returns. returns. We have about 15% of the audience, the audience agreeing with that. that. Everybody, Everybody else knows they, they should seek the same returns as any other kind of investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think, think this is sure there. there. How, How many believe that impact, impact investors should, should seek the same kind of returns, returns as non-impact non investors? investors? That you should, you should, you should be, in be in the game, game for profits. profits. Okay. 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 Not, not, not much. much. This is about, about 40%. I, I think Suresh, you have 20%. This is, this, this is obviously something that's been debated endlessly in the industry. And again, I think in some ways the question, in some ways the question creates more confusion. Okay. Because again, we have to ask ourselves return about what? Because, because there is, there is gross, gross return, return and then there's, there's net, net return. return. Okay. okay. Right? right? 
Now, Now, if markets, markets are working, working very, very, very poorly, poorly and, and the inputs to those markets, for example, we've invested in a company, a company called, called I Merit that, that trains people in 24 Farganas, in media groups, which, which is a very, is a very, very uh, underdeveloped area, area, and trains and people who had no education to actually work uh, in, in sort of a very, very modern, rural web services business. business. Uh, in, in that particular case, because of the inputs that are coming into it, we don't expect to earn market rates. So in that situation, because of the market context, we don't expect Paid, paid, earn commercial, commercial rates. rates. But, But even, even if you're, if you're investing, investing in a business, in a business that, that is operating in a slum in Mumbai, Mumbai. Markets, markets are generally, generally functioning, functioning well. well. We know, we know the shampoo sachets are selling, selling, and you know you, you, have, you have commercial, commercial companies, companies operating, operating there. there. People are buying uh, prepaid, prepaid cards, etc. So, so markets, markets are generally functioning well. well. We, we would expect to get market, market rates in return. return. Okay. Right? Right? So first, first thing you have to understand, understand is what's, what's the market context. context. Okay. Once, Once you understand, understand the market context, you have to then understand or figure out what's the return that you would want to get in that situation. Now. There's, There's a very, a very big, big difference between gross returns, 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 as I was saying earlier, and, and net, net returns. Okay. Okay. The gross, gross return is the return that you expect, expect from an investment in the company. company. If the, if the, as, as I said, if the company is in Dharavi, I, I would expect to get market rates in return because I think markets, markets are generally functioning well. well. If, if the business, the business is, largely is largely based or many inputs are derived from 24 Farganas, or uh, Latihar, Latihar district in Jharkhand, I don't, I don't expect, expect to get market rates in return. Okay. Okay. But that's, that's from the company. That's my gross rate of return. I, as, I an as an impact investor, investor because of my intentionality, the point, the point I was making earlier, earlier have, a have a much longer holding period, period in some cases, 15, 15 years. years. Okay. Okay. I, am I am providing, providing much more support, support uh, to, to companies, companies because I'm providing I'm government support, support, I'm providing, providing human capital, capital support, support, I'm providing strategic support, support much, much more, more so than a typical partner in a venture capital firm. So my management expenses are high. Okay. Number three, I am providing a lot more support in terms of market development, regulation, advocacy, and so on. Maybe I'm making grants to form an association. So for all of those reasons, my expenses are high, my exits are later, and perhaps lower return as well. Therefore, While my, my gross return, return ultimately, ultimately might, might be a market, market return, return because that's, that's what, what I would need to get to get commercial, commercial capital. capital. Okay, okay. My, my net, net return, return as an impact investor, investor and net, net return, return, longer holding period, higher cost, got it, got it. Different, different type of portfolio, portfolio from a commercial, commercial investor is going, is going to be low. low. Therefore, Therefore, I think, I think people, people who LPs, LPs that come, come in and invest with financial intermediaries that claim to be impact investors should expect to get muted net returns. All right. All right, that's a good, that's good. That's comprehensive answer. answer. There you go. Muted, Muted net returns, returns being the key word we take, we take away from Jain, which brings, which brings us, us to the next, next question of how to measure impact. Meenakshi, how, how should we measure impact? impact? What, is What is the value, value of one life saved from cholera? cholera? Financial, Financial returns, returns are easy, easy to measure. measure. What about, What about diffused, diffused social returns? Over, over a period of, let's say, 50 years, you save 100 lives from cholera or malaria. What is the value of that? And how does it figure into Jain's matrix of impact computing? So we, we believe, believe that, that uh, measuring development, development, development is very important because, because it will attract impact, impact investment that is more impact, impact investors to this whole area. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we are really small right now compared to the needs, so I think there's a big job to be done and that can be done. We do better measurement and that's what we are trying to do. I think the fact that you can't measure the impact perfectly is something that is not possible. Okay. 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 Okay.
and, and for them, for them to, to realize, realize that, that millennial development goals can, can be achieved, achieved even, through even through this brilliant, brilliant mechanism, mechanism which returns, which returns capital, capital and lets it sit available for use over, over and over again. again. Mark, Mark, two questions, questions for you based, based on that. that. One, One, how important, how important is, it is it to measure, to measure the, 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 the monetizable aspect, aspect of all this impact? impact. And, and second, second, is there a less expensive, expensive way to compute this impact? impact? Mm. Well, well, all businesses, businesses measure, measure their performance. performance. And, and if you've set, set yourself out, out as some sort of impact investing business, business and, you've and you've sold yourself, yourself to your shareholders or to your investors as an impact investment company, then you are obligated to provide some sort of measure of social return. I think a question, question that we, that we have, have is, is you know, having, having watched, watched this over the last 10 years, years is, is are we putting too, too much emphasis on the measure of calculation and reporting of social returns? returns. Oh, it, it seems, seems like, like, well, it looks, it looks like, like there have been an entire cottage, cottage industries that have arisen to help companies, companies and help investors measure, measure their social return. return. And we have, and we have, we have incredibly, incredibly smart and, and well-financed people that have, that have looked at this problem for a very long time, long time and we still don't have the emergence of some sort of gold standard measuring social impact. That's not because people haven't tried, it's because it's extremely difficult bordering, bordering on, on impossible. impossible. And so, so our question is, at what point, point is enough where we, where we just say, you know what, what? We, we know, know that we're making a social impact, impact. and, and like, like you said, said, at some, some point, point what we're doing, doing is good, good enough. enough. Let's, Let's actually, actually reallocate the resources mm -hmm. that, we're that we're spending, spending, spending our wheels, wheels trying to calculate, calculate the social return, return. reinvest it in the business, business. Improve, improve our products, products improve our services, make life better for our consumers or our customers. Anthony, Anthony, for an investor, investor like you who like sits, sits far away in California and is talking to us by video conference, conference. you can't, you can't be, be visiting India every week. week. You can't you be going, going to a slum called Dharavi in, in Mumbai to see the impact, the impact of your investment. investment. Therefore, Therefore, you're going to rely on sheets of paper or photographs. photographs. How, How important, important is it to you? you? To notice, notice the, the impact, impact or to observe, observe the impact, impact of your investments. investments. And second, and second how, important how important is it to you to quantify in exact dollar or rupee terms the impact that you made? So that, that's a great question, and I do think that there is a bit of fatigue in the community around this question of measurement. And yet, we really need to remember that measurement is a means to an end, and what are we trying to achieve by measuring? And I would argue that as investors, as entrepreneurs, as people committed to this sector, we really gain two benefits from effective measurement. The first is we, in, we encourage more capital to enter the space when we are able to convince people that their impact investments will deliver not just the financial returns they can find elsewhere, but the social impacts they seek. And we compete with the alternative way to achieve social impact, which is through donations. So I think there's one purpose of measurement is to mobilize capital. The other very important point, and this is where the parallels to the global capital markets are important, is the development of standards for accounting, the, the gap standards for accounting, have really driven productivity gains in capitalism through a single mechanism, which is allowing the marginal dollar or rupee to be invested in the marginally more productive business. That's what measurement has done in the for-profit side. And similarly, we should be able to create measurements that allow us to make sure that the marginal impact investment dollar goes to the most effective problem solver and not just the most effective storyteller. And so. I don't believe that we can afford as a sector to hold ourselves to a standard of measurement that creates huge costs and delays and so forth, but we need to create minimum standards that meet those two goals. And one of the most important elements, which Mark mentioned, is around standardization, especially when it comes to understanding where we can allocate our marginal resources to the most effective option. We need standards that allow us to compare the social impact of one alternative investment option to another. And the Global Impact Investing Network has promoted the Impact Reporting Investment Standards, IRIS, simply to create a common language that at least allows us an opportunity to be able to compare those social impacts. Um, so I think it, it is important, and yet we shouldn't create an industry that's turning measurement into an end in itself. We should always remember that it is a means to an end and ask ourselves, whether our hypotheses of the level of measurement we're doing is driving capital into the sector and allowing those marginal decisions to be placed in the most productive place. You know, that's what we should be seeking with measurements. And uh, we're certainly not there, but I think there's been a lot of great work been done and uh, needs to continue to be done on that front. 
But, but, but you had a reaction, reaction to Anthony's, Anthony's uh, comments. Well, comments. Well, well, I think Anthony's absolutely, absolutely right. right. It's, it's, it's important, important to measure, measure and what gets measured gets, gets done. done. Um, I mean, Aristotle, Aristotle famously said, said that it's more difficult, difficult to give, give money, money away than make money in the first place. place. And that's, that's, I think what he was getting, getting at is that it's inherently challenging, challenging to measure a social, social return. return. Mm -hmm. Because, again, you can you measure, measure the good, good that goes, goes to the person, person, but how do you measure the impact that, that has on their life? It's like dropping a pedal in a pond. The ripple keeps going and going and going. But it doesn't mean that you don't try. I think one of our concerns is that when we talk about impact investing or social venture capital or whatever vernacular you use, we're talking about one tool in the toolkit. In the sort of tool of toolkit of capital, there are different tools. And Legato, for example, we have a very, very active foundation that's supported over 1,600 humanitarian projects in over 100 countries in the world. The reason why is in those, in those situations, situations, we believe that the, the most effective capital is philanthropic capital. capital. It's charitable capital. capital. You, can't, you, can't, you, can't you can't go to a person who's just suffered, suffered a, a natural, natural disaster, disaster and say, you should build a business. You should, you should build a, a web-based web business. business. It's, it's inappropriate and totally ineffective. And so if, so we're, if talking we're talking about what's, what's most effective, effective that, that should be driving what, what capital tool do we use? Philanthropic capital. Commercial capital. This space seems to be blending Commercial, commercial capital, capital and charitable, charitable capital. capital. One, One risk, risk though, that I'd be interested, interested to know the other panelists' views, views on is, is at, at what point, point, if you're, if you're accepting, accepting a lower return, return in your investment, investment are, you are you then, then basically, basically just subsidizing businesses, businesses with charitable capital? capital? And, and what, what are, are the unintended, unintended consequences of subsidizing, of subsidizing businesses, businesses with charitable, with charitable capital? capital? Do you, Do you crowd out, out other, other commercial, commercial capital. capital. Do you, Do you constrict, constrict supply, supply of capital, capital to businesses, businesses because, because you're, you're mispricing, mispricing it, it well, as, as you allocate it to businesses? Right, right. That's, that's, that's my next, next question. question. Thank, Thank you for asking, asking it. it. But I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> right. <laughs> Jen, this question is for you, and so I'm going to call as well later. later. <coughs> if, 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 if we are to accept that impact, impact funds hold them to a higher, higher level, level of accountability, muted uh, net returns, returns or, or, or any other kind of uh, accountability that you hold yourself to, do you then deserve different fund economics than other kinds of businesses? Should you get, for instance, publicly subsidized capital? Should, be allowed, should you be allowed to borrow from a pool funded by taxpayers of the country? Yes. yes. I think, I think the answer, the answer absolutely, absolutely because, because again, again let's, let's come, come back, back to what the objective, objective is. is. The objective is to be able to make markets, markets work, work where they're, they're not working, working uh, you, know, you know, properly. properly right? Right? If, if markets, markets work working properly, properly commercial, commercial capital would come in and problems would get solved. The fact that markets are not working properly implies that the state has a role. There are either externalities or there are income support or beneficiaries that you have to attend to that you can't get at through other ways. Now, obviously, you know, there are safety nets that have to be put in place. If there are natural disasters, those have to be met with philanthropic capital or state capital. So, so again, again, exactly to Mark's point, there is a toolkit of capital. And impact investing is a niche. Let's be very clear about it. It's a small little niche in the range of capital that's available to either states or commercial or market capital, however you want to look at it. So you have to be very clear about what, what is it that you're trying to achieve. And if indeed you're trying to achieve that and you're on the hook, you're accountable for delivering impact, which of course is hard to measure. So you have to find some way that's good enough to be able to go to your IPs, to the state, or other people that are giving you money for a cause. So if, so you, if are you are signing, signing up to take that money for a cause, then you have to be accountable for that. For that. And, and in return, return, you should you be able to get subsidized, subsidized capital, capital because you are you're essentially enabling markets, markets to work where they would, they would not work properly. properly. You, would you would also then accept increased state supervision or regulation. Of your I, I think that goes, that goes without saying because, again, as I said, if the intentionality is on your back, Okay. You are carrying, carrying that responsibility, responsibility that, that you are, are going, going to solve problems, problems that are not going to be solved by anyone else. They are not going to be solved by the state. They are not going to be solved by commercial capital. You are solving a particular narrow, very narrow set of problems, right? I mean, let's get it right. Commercial capital is trillions and trillions of dollars. Impact investing at best, however you want to look at it, is a few billion dollars. It's a narrow little niche, right, that we are talking about. So great capital comes great responsibility. Well, I wouldn't say great capital. I'd say, you know, in your little niche, you have a little responsibility. So, so be accountable, be accountable for, for it, it. And if you're delivering, delivering fine. fine. And if you're not if delivering, they will stop funding. Can, can, can I ask you a question? Yes, yes. yes. So, so you're, talking you're talking about markets, markets that are broken, broken or markets that need to be fixed. fixed. And, 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 and we're, we're sort, of, sort of, the answer, answer seems, seems to always be, well, well it's, it's, it's business or it's capital, capital that has to fix that. What's the role of the state in fixing broken markets? And particularly, is it that the state needs to do more? 
or is the state, state needs to do less? less. Or, or different? different. Well, well, again, again you, you said, said it yourself said earlier, Mark, but you said that for these markets, markets to get unlocked, for example, we were just, we were just talking, talking earlier about what happened in Andhra Pradesh relative, relative to microfinance. microfinance. The, the fact, fact is, is, you know, it, it takes, takes a village, village to create a market. market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so everybody, everybody has, has to come, to come together, together, right? right? And, and there has, has to be an orchestrator, there has to be somebody that can, in fact, work with the policymakers, that can ensure that the industry that's developing is appropriately responsible, that consumers are properly educated about what they're doing or they're not doing. So, in fact, you do need somebody to be the architect, architect the, the, the orchestrator, orchestrator to be able to unlock this market, market. But, but everybody, everybody has, has to play together. together. Mm -hmm. If everybody is not playing together, together the, market the market is, is the broken market is never going to get healed, or the market will never take off. off. There, there is a very important temporal aspect to it as well, which is that there is an S curve in market development, and there's a long flat part in that S curve when the market is developing. That's when you're laying down the railroad. You're laying down the railroad at that point. You're deciding, you know, what's the gauge of the railroad. You're deciding what kind of locomotives are. You're deciding what kind of traffic signals have to go up. You're deciding how the guy who's driving the train is going to be trained. All these things have to be decided when you're laying down the railroad. But what does an investor like you do when you know that's what's going to be the reality is in the developing world, I don't say necessarily that the state is abdicating the role. We have a state that's lacking in capacity. Or we have a dysfunctional state. Or, sadly, we have a corrupt state. Right? Right? So, so we, we have, have a situation, situation where the state, state is not is able, able to do what it should be doing. doing. Or, for or instance, instance not, not that, that in the, the development of the West, of the West was, was any different. different. It, took it took them 200, 200 years to solve some of these problems. problems. We are trying, trying to do it in, in, in a very, very sort of fast uh, way, 20, 20 30, 30, 40, 40 years. years. We're trying to solve problems for billions of people. You know, it takes the state some time to get its act together. I mean, maybe an example is helpful. So we have invested in a company in India that is involved in the business of remittances. And when, when people, people think, think of remittances, remittances they, they think, think of remittances, remittances from, from citizens who have gone abroad who are sending money back, back home. home. Well, the fact the is that the remittance, remittance business within India is, is huge. by orders, orders of magnitude, magnitude larger than, than the remittance, remittance business of Indians, Indians abroad sending, sending money, money home. home. The, 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 the market, market in India for remittances, remittances is about $150 billion a year, that's an estimate. Huge. huge. There's no lack of investors ready to invest in that business because it's a proven business model, everyone understands it. There, there's, there's no, no lack, lack of entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs who have identified, identified the, opportunity. the opportunity. So, so what's, what's holding, holding it back? back? <laughs> is it that <laughs> the government has abdicated, abdicated its role? Or is it, or is it because, because or is it or is that, that the government, government actually is playing, playing a role that's, that's not being, being helpful, helpful to the development of that, that sector, sector or that industry? Or that is, industry. is the government is holding, holding back, back the, that business model? So there are regulations that are in place right now that require anyone on the receiving end of a remittance to have a bank account. And in rural India, where you have hundreds of millions of people, they don't have Bank accounts, accounts. And, and there are lots of KYC, KYC issues, issues and all sorts of things. Now, now happily, about a year, about a year ago, ago, that regulation was changed. changed. But that's, that's a year, a year ago. ago, and the, the, the issue of remittances has been around, around for decades, decades and decades. decades. So, so I, I guess, guess to reframe the, the question, question and, and especially as impact investors, investors what, is what is our role? role? Is our role is just to focus very narrowly on business, entrepreneurs, and capital, or do we also have almost an obligation to get involved in helping to create a business climate? That allows, that allows for well, Mark, that, that, is precise, that, that is precisely why that is provide, precisely why returns, returns for impact investors are going to be lower because, because they, they do have to do a lot of work with the state, state with regulators, with policymakers on these issues. issues. That's, That's part of the that responsibility. Cost money. That costs time and money, and, and, and it takes a long time. And it takes a long time. Yeah, that's called lobbying. That's called lobbying. That's the expense of regulating business. Lobbying. Impact investors do what they call it. Unfortunately, I think I also believe that capitalist called patient capital. Sorry, we need to be a little louder again. There's some problem with the mic. Should I give him a hand? So, so, so I think unfortunately what's happening is okay, okay. It's, it's, it's patient capital. But I think this, this patient is required in regulation, right? So you need to have patient regulation. There's a patient level. I think required in some of this. And I think it's going to take a while. And I think, I think we need to be The question, Paul, is not whether it's going to take a while. Are we on the right track at all in my question? Is it going to take forever or is it never going to happen? Yeah, so I think directionality is important. I think the direction is important. I am a firm believer that we are in the right direction. I think some of these models that would have happened is going to drive the direction faster and further. And, and, and the indicator for that is actually seen in what you were talking talk about in terms of entrepreneurship, driving, driving up, uh, at least that index, index sub index, index going up. up. And I think I'm a strong believer that that, 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 that is a strong, strong direction. direction. Uh, in some some of so directionally, we are good. Speed-wise, a little to be desired. Meenakshi, when are we actually? I would just say that I think there's a role which is 
which we have to play, which we are not playing. Okay. Uh, and Who, I think who's the we? We means as a group. group. In fact, investors are okay. Okay. But we focused a lot on enterprise level of issues, okay. on fund level of issues, but there are a set of policy issues that constrain entrepreneurial responses to market opportunities. And I think the state, many developed countries, the state has played a big impact in investor role by Providing funds for incubators, for offering all kinds of subsidies to entrepreneurs who are still in that first phase when there's a lot of failure and get, you know, they can't get commercial capital. But I think that's one role that we need to play, that lobbying the state to do more of that. And the second one is actually on failure and making starting and closing businesses a lot easier than it is at present. That's not just for impact businesses, for any business that needs to be done. That's true, but impact business is very innovative. I mean, we are closer to innovations and business innovations than perhaps regular business. And in that sphere, I feel starting failing has to be easier than for regular business. For standard chartered bank, it doesn't need to have easier Failure, failure regulation, regulation because, because they are a regular, regular business. business. But a small SME down the road that makes auto parts, parts exactly. Exactly. Right, right, so you, so you would, would, would posit that a group of investors, of investors like Mark Mangiant would, would form a consortium and lobby, lobby with the government. government. Same way a private, private group of investors would lobby, lobby for, for better regulations, regulations and, 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 and a more even playing field for all investors, especially social investors. Okay, I'm getting stinkers that I'm going over time. So I'm going to conclude the discussion, but not before. We get a, we get set, a set of questions, questions from the audience. audience. I have about 10, 10 minutes, minutes have been allowed to have Rajada was going to, to kick my posterior if I go beyond that. that. So, so two, two, two requests. requests. One, one, I need you to stand up when you ask questions, questions so the cameras, cameras can get you. Get you. Two, two, very, very important, important, I need, I need you to keep, keep your questions, questions brief. Not like my questions that go on forever. Please keep your questions brief. Yeah. Gentlemen in the far right, I'll come to the person there. Sorry, the lights are shining in your face, so I can't see you. Can we get a mic to that person there? There are mics here if you need one. Good morning, God. Uh, yeah, can, can I request, I request you to hold, hold the mic up, up sir? Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. We, need we need to increase, increase the volume, volume on the mic. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Just, give just give us a second, second to sort. sort. Just check, check it, check it again. again. Nope, nope. Can we, can get, we get another, another mic, mic or fix that mic? mic? If somebody, if somebody can invent fail-proof fail mics, mics, that's a that's huge, huge business <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> that's an I guarantee. <laughs> if you can invent a laptop, laptop that can, can connect to any project, project the amount of boardroom minutes you've saved in the world. world. It's, it's not you want the other mic? mic? Not ready for investment, but innovation, right? right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back, back. You need the other mic? mic? Okay, try this one. If it doesn't work, then you'll have to shout. I think he's out of range of the words. Sorry, Sorry, we'll get, get over, over this something, something just a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, yeah perfect. Uh, perfect. You know, no, concentrating on, on impact and then, uh, uh, we have been concentrating on, on impact, impact investing uh, from, from the perspective of the society. society. But, but to, to me, me, you know, investing, investing is the job, job of the investor. investor. And, and I think, I think his uh, views about the investment, investment need to be considered the most. most. Because, because uh, you know, you may be facing two opportunities, one, a highly profitable one, and, and uh, another, another one, one which has, has uh, low, low profit, profit uh, opportunities, uh, but, but get, get into, into it, it uh, because, because you want, want welfare, welfare and, and you know, you know it's, it's the welfare, welfare which is driving you. you. If, if you have achieved, achieved that, that, I think, I think you have reached there. there. That, 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 that would be, be uh, impact, impact in this. Right, right. So, so let me throw the question. question. It's not really a question, question. question. common people throw it to Jain. Two opportunities, one gives you extraordinary returns in financial terms. One gives you extraordinary returns in welfare and social terms. Which would you choose and why? Well, well, you have to ask yourself whether you're looking for long-term growth, as Mark was saying, or short term. Because if you are looking to make a difference in the lives of millions of people, then, then, of course, of course the, business the business you want to invest in is a business, business that's going to be profitable and go very quickly, quickly because, because then you can, you can get to millions. Get to millions. So, so, you know, you know I, mean, I mean, I will always look at a business and say, is this going to be a great business, business or not? So this so is a false trade-off again? Again, again it's, it's a completely a false trade-off. Because, okay. because yes, yes, you can, you have, can have a business that's subsidizing a few people and you'll get to, you know, 20 people. But if you want to impact millions of people, you have to have a great business. And like I said, it's not. I don't care whether the entrepreneur says I'm going to build a social business or not. 
I just want to make sure it's a great business that can scale. That's an important distinction. Meenakshi, if there's a business that can earn a lot of profits, I introduce them to a regular investor. Okay. And let them invest in that. And my role comes in where regular investors won't go. And yes, there's a possibility of some profit and a development return as well. Right. It's a trick question and trick answer. So, so Jayan's organization, organization and, and Legata are, are currently, currently working, working together, together with, with one particular community within India. India. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smaller demographic. demographic. And, and within, within that, that community, community there, there aren't, aren't, aren't that, that many entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. There, really there really are not are very many investable, investable opportunities, opportunities, no matter, no matter how, how you classify, classify yourself as a regular investor or impact investor. investor. So, so what we're doing is using the philanthropic capital tool and we're, and we're working, working with the local, local authorities, authorities and we're working, and we're working with, with people, people that, that want to be entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs young, young people and experienced business people, people. Um, um, to, help to help stimulate, stimulate that market, market, to provide training, training to provide mentorship, to, to, to actually just, just convene, convene people, people convene, convene people, people that, that have, 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 have run successful, successful businesses, businesses with people, with people that, that aspire to. to. And our, our, our long-term long hope is that that effort will at some point yield investable opportunities. So, so which, which hat, hat are we wearing? wearing? Are we wearing, are we wearing the, the, the sort of the angel, angel hat of, of we're really good and we have a halo? halo? Or are, are we wearing the, 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 the horn hat? hat? You know, we're you know, just, we're just, we're just, we're just, we're just, we're just in it for the money. money. Right. Well, well, the fact, the fact is, is, why is, why is that, that a distinction? distinction? Because, because if you take a long-term view, if you truly have patient capital, then you have to believe that in 10 or 20 years, there will be a vibrant and investable community of opportunities within that particular demographic. And as a result, it will, it will have created, created better, better opportunities. opportunities. It will have created more disposable income in households. It will have, will have provided, provided better goods and services for that community. community. So, you so you have, have to believe that, that fundamentally, if you, if you really, really care about economic, economic development, development, if you, if you really, really actually have, have a pro core agenda, agenda, you have, you have to, to get comfortable with the fact that business drives development. Right, the other question, I'll just go to the gentleman in the back, I'll come to you next, and then to the person on the left, left, right, yeah. We have time, we have time for two or three questions, questions. so please, please try and keep questions, questions brief. brief. I'll try and keep the answers answer. brief. Uh, uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, actually, I'm Vikas Nath, uh, Associate Director, Director of the Future UN Project. Project. Uh, uh, actually, actually, listening, listening to, to all the panelists, panelists I have ended, ended up being more confused. confused. Because, because on one, one hand, hand, you know, I, I see that, that you know, you're talking about state failure. And you know, that at the same time, we're also talking about that you can't produce an investment until the state intervenes. And, and at the, at same, the same time, time some of the panelists are talking about, about that India doesn't, doesn't have the funds, the funds. it is coming, coming lower in the ranking. ranking. So I am so feeling that there is something basically wrong in our thinking. thinking. First, First of all, India, India was never a poor country. country. It still is not a poor country. We had the British, we had Mohammed Ghazdi taking as much wealth as possible. And it's still a rich country in a lot of ways. The important part which impact investing has to do is to look at the fundamental reasons why people are poor. Having, Having said that there's a lack of capital, capital investing more capital, capital will produce return, there's a very simple thing, unless, unless we change, change the fundamental, fundamental reasons. reasons. Right, right. Uh, uh, and uh, that's, and that's, that's why the ranking comes lower, because, because there's not, not enough of technology, technology transfer. transfer, there's, there's a lot, lot of uh, additionality that are imposed by the colonial countries or ex-colonial countries. So I think looking at the political dimension, we'll have a much different way of talking about impact investing. Right, that's a sweeping tirade about colonialism, about Mughal invasion, about who took what. Right, right, it all boils down to one, one simple, simple question, question and Meenakshi is going to answer the question. Meenakshi, why are poor people poor? poor, poor. <laughs> <laughs> is it because people <laughs> stole money away from us? <laughs> poor or because people, just poor? Poor people are poor because they have born poor parents. And why were the parents poor? Uh, the parents are poor because <laughs> our, actually our system has uh, either excluded people socially or excluded them geographically. And, and uh, uh, tie them, them down, down into occupations, occupations that, that don't, don't have, have the same, same amount of income potential, potential as others. As uh, uh, and, and the state, state has not done, done enough, enough to remove, to remove the, the regulatory barriers, barriers that, that can free up everybody and allow, allow each one, one as, much as much of a chance, chance as anybody, anybody else. else. Okay, okay. So, so whether, whether it's the, the education system, system that can make a big difference to democratize opportunity that hasn't been delivered. But it, it's the health, health system, system, it hasn't, hasn't delivered. delivered. So, so more, more people, people get, get poorer, poorer because, because of the health expenditures than any, any other reason in this country. country. So, so it is it a is combination of historical issues as well as state failure. And, and of, course, of course all of us, of us jointly taking responsibility, responsibility for, the for the issues as well. And, and I think I see a lot more, more of the third, third and that's, that's giving me a lot of So we can't do much about Mohammed of Ghazni and the British colonialists, but we can do something about our broken healthcare system. And that could prevent poor people from getting poorer and for children to be born to poor parents and perpetuating that cycle. The lady on the left, I'll come to you next, sir. I saw a hand raised there. 
sorry, the sorry, lights, lights are very bright. bright. We, can't we can't clearly see, see who's, who's where. where. So, so, can we get can a mic to the lady there? there? Uh, no, uh, no, I think you'll need a mic. mic. So, so, there, there, to the left. To the left yeah. Yeah. As, As I, I understand, understand it, most investors, investors invest. Can I request you to speak into the mic, ma'am? As, As I understand it, most investors invest for returns. returns. Now, now, my, my question, question is that in the initial, initial phases, phases, people might look at delayed returns. returns. But, but how does, how does that, that impact sustainability of more and more people, people to be investing in this kind of social ventures? Right, right. Will that have a long term? Right, right. So, so Jan, will you eventually go bankrupt, bankrupt if you're too patient, patient is the question. question. How, will, how, will how will your enterprise sustain if you have a finite amount of patience for return? And how will other, other businesses, businesses like yours sustain? Or, will or will you, are, you, are you doomed in your very business model? model? Well, you're dependent on the kindness of your LPs. Okay. And so, if you're, which is your limited partners, people who are contributing capital to you, if you're an impact investing fund, then you obviously have to set up the right expectations. And if they're willing to wait for 50 years, then hey, you're in business. Okay. All right. So find the right partners. Would be ask you question. Sorry, sorry, I can't, I can't see, see where you are. You are. Yes, yes, I am dark in color as well. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Okay, I can't see where you are. Anyway, anyway. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Here, here. Uh, uh, I, uh, hi everybody. I come from the pharma industry. Okay. okay. I uh, work for Abbott India, India. Uh, which is the number one uh, pharmaceutical uh, company now in the country. country. Okay. So I came here with a lot of curiosity and I have been listening to the regulations that are going on. For the last, last two years, years I have to understand, understand impact, impact investing. investing. Mm -hmm. And, and two, questions two questions to crop up in my mind, I thought was the right, right one to, to uh, maybe clarify myself. myself. The, the uh, first question, question that I would like, like to uh, ask, ask uh, the esteemed uh, persons on the dais is, is uh, what, what do you, do you see, see about, about the future, future of, of uh, impact, impact investing in the healthcare health health sector? sector? In the healthcare sector. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. And, and uh, the second uh, question would be: uh, Do you, do you see, see any future of partnering with pharma companies, companies for impact, impact investing in the, in the health sector? Right. Let right. me right. right. throw the throw question, question to Mark. Mark, Mark. The issue of health in India, India Meenakshi pointed, pointed out, out one of the prime reasons, reasons for perpetuating the cycle of poverty. poverty. So, do you, so do you see partnering with big pharma in India or medium pharma or small pharma as an investment strategy? Pharma and the medical industry is just another sector to investors. It's just like. Investing, investing in education, education investing, investing in, in, in steel, steel production. production. Uh, the, question the question really, the fundamental question, question for an investor should be, be what is the return? return? And, and if, if you are an impact investor, investor you, owe you owe it to your investors, investors and to your limited, limited partners, partners to calculate both a financial, financial return and a social return. Legatum is currently invested in, in indirectly in uh, the, the, the healthcare, healthcare sector, sector in India, India. And specifically in rural hospital networks. But it's, but it's a, a huge, huge challenge, challenge. Uh, uh, and, and I wouldn't have, have to tell, tell all of you that. It's a challenge, it's a challenge of just human, human resources, resources, just getting, just getting qualified, qualified nurses, nurses and doctors. It's a, it's challenge, a challenge of capital. capital. The, the need is, is massive. massive. And, it's and it's a challenge, challenge of, the of the regulatory environment. environment. And, again, and again, as, as impact, impact investors, investors, if you care about, about the spread of quality health care in India, you have to look at all three of those areas and make sure that they're all working in a way that facilitates the rise of good entrepreneurs and that, that welcomes, welcomes good capital, capital to pair them up, them up the, the problems, problems will be addressed, addressed in time, in time if, the, if, if, if the playing field, field is clear. clear. The upshot the is the health industry no different from, from investing in any other, other kind of industry, industry in India. India. Right, right. Final, Final question, question, gentlemen in the front. In the front. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, Balaji uh, from, from IntelliCap. Uh, recently, uh, recently uh, government, uh, government of India, India they, they have, have uh, 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 mandated, mandated that uh, uh, every company has to know contribute 2% of their uh, profits and CSR, CSR activity. activity. So, so is, is that, that going, going to change the dynamics of this industry? We will bring more fun into, into the, impact the impact investing, investing space, space or, or kind of, kind of going to fizzle out, out, out company, company will try and, and figure out a way, way to, to know, come around, around that, that and, know, and not, not money. money. Not much of money. money. So, so let me throw the question, question to Anthony who has been quiet for a while. This is to make money. And if this 2% is spent in that old and disproven ideology, then the money will be spent on charity, where hopefully it will serve a powerful purpose. Likely it will do some good, but not as much good as it could do. Were it to be deployed in much of the ways that the panel's been talking about, where we match the need for that capital with the opportunities that entrepreneurs are able to create. So I don't know if it'll necessarily uh, be good or not. One thing I should say from the US where I'm sitting, 
our, our U.S. domestic impact investing industry has been driven by a government mandate to our banks, similar to what you have around retail banks having an obligation to invest in underserved markets. And what happened in the U.S. is that mandate was placed on our banking sector 30 years ago. That led the sector to seed and capitalize an industry of impact investment intermediaries um, that now have $30 billion that we put to work in our communities. And so there really is an opportunity to look at models going on around the world, uh, what the United Kingdom is doing now with enticing impact investment to fill some of the gap being left behind by the retreating government, um, so that this kind of mandate, which can be crucial to kickstart the industry and put capital where it otherwise wouldn't go, um, it's a great opportunity, and I hope that India will learn from the mistakes that other countries have made, as well as some of the successes, and put that capital to work in a way that's not bound by old ideologies, but that's really focused on where it can make the most difference for the opportunities that are presented right now. Right, and a right, closing, closing comment, comment from Paul, I have, I have to, wrap to wrap up, up at, this at this point. point. I'm sorry, you'll have, have to catch the panelists in the panel 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 break. break. We're, We're running way over time, time. I'm going to be eating into other sessions. A closing comment? But I was going to respond to what Balaji said. I think the beauty of this this new regulation, that is 2%, is the last budget actually talked about notifying any spend by a corporate as part of CSR on incubation. Actually, Actually, as, as uh, exempt them from, from as, as included, as included in, yes, yes, in my view, if, if that, that can, can ha actually, actually happen, happen, I think, I think impact investors can build, build on that spend, spend as a pool, pool of capital, capital that, that is unlocked. unlocked. And, and, and how we how use it, it, I agree that, that we have, we have to, to use a lot of millions and we need to have a new ideology match with the type of capital. You know, I'll just make a final point, which is Paul and Mark, that regulatory measure which is in the union budget, was actually, was actually introduced, introduced because, because of the work, work that we did with the Planning Commission and the Ministry of Finance. Okay. So, so it is possible for the impact of the, the, the lobbying. Lobby. Exactly. So, lobby. so it is so possible. possible, you just have to stick to it. All right, All right, that concludes our session. session. Like, like I said, I'm way over time. I'm going to face the consequences, consequences of going over time shortly short when I leave, leave the room. room. So, so thank you, panelists. Thank you for joining us, Anthony. And thank you, all the Sure. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you moderator. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. As a token, token of our appreciation, we would now like, like to felicitate our moderator and our panelists with mementos. And may I request our moderator, Mr. Suresh Venkat, to kindly do the honors. Mr. Suresh Venkat to Mr. Mark Stosen. Requesting, requesting the panelist, the panelist members, members to kindly, kindly collect your mementos. mementos. Requesting, requesting Mr. Suresh, Suresh Venkat to kindly do the honors to Ms. Minakshi Nath. Mr. Suresh Venkat to kindly do the honors to Mr. Jayant Sinha. And last but not, not the least, least, Mr. Paul Basil. Basil. We now we request... request Mr. Mr. Anurag, Anurag Agarwal, Agarwal, the CEO, CEO of IntelliCap, to kindly present, present the memento to, to our uh, moderator, Mr. Mr. Suresh Venkat. Once again, a hearty, hearty thanks, thanks to our, to our uh, moderators, moderators and our, and our panel, panel members. members.